Hello and welcome back to the game with the greatest game theories of all time. It's Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, or Sly the Tasmanian Tiger, as it currently is. Look at this. Mm. So fancy in those school shorts, looking very gothic. Love it. With the eyeliner, the eyeliner just, it's so good. The eyeliner just improves everything. So we're on our way to Beyond the Black Stump. I don't know if anybody knows of this level. It's very snowy. It's very grim. Let's find out. Lots of lots of dangers await. Yep. Thunder eggs hidden everywhere somehow. Who knows who keeps on putting all these thunder eggs everywhere, but it certainly isn't Dennis because he's hoarding them all. Here we go again. What have you done, Sheila? Yeah, likely story. Do you know what? I bet she's some, like... No. No, no. You know what, Sheila? You know what, Sheila? Three times is too many. I, you know, you're causing too much... You're causing too much strife to these poor children. They're already, like, what? Uh... Oh, I, I, I almost called them orphans, but they're not orphans. This is the school, not an orphanage. Um, yeah, I wonder if it's some kind of scam. I bet she caused this fire. She was trying to get insurance. Ooh, thanks, camera. Good, good for you. Glad you did that. So we've got a long, windy path. Like even like, look at this. It's, it's actually, that, that map is useless. This is a really useless map because, first of all, the menu is covering a portion of it up in the top left corner. But yeah, it really doesn't, it really doesn't show the true scale here. But effectively, we started down there, we've worked our way over to the left-hand side, and we've got all these little paths and side bits to do on the right. We're going to get to it all. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do... No, I'm not going to kill these. I need to break these first. Because I want to I want to sneak sneak this bit. Essentially, I need to squeeze myself between two frills so that I can do a double jump up to this one. Easiest way of getting that one because getting to that one uh, is is three like long uh don't know what they're called, these plants that throw you somewhere. Uh, three of those will take you that far, but then you've got to do a little bit of backtracking, and I'd rather just not, so... Ooh, you snuck up on me, didn't you, Sunny Jim? Right. Got some, uh... Yeah, alright, alright. Calm down, spider. I'll get to you. There's enough death for everyone. Yes, I can hear you. Girl? D d what? Oh god, I swear to god, these voices, they're so bizarre. I made this point in my Glitch Fest video that I did, that was actually that was so popular, that video. I have no idea why that video is just increasingly popular. It just keeps getting more and more views, but whatever, I'm not going to complain. I made a, a, a point in that video that these koala children, they, they have a different voice. In the original, in the original game, all they did was just a, a variation of a whistle call. It was very easy to perform by any gendered person, any child really, as long as you've got lips and a tongue, you know, it's, you, you can do it. You've just got a bit of practice a little bit. But now, all of them sound male, and it's really bizarre. I have no idea why they've done this. Every single one of these koala children all sound like boys, and it, it just doesn't make any sense. Because they're not all boys. In fact, I think it is a almost a, a, an exact 50-50 split of boys and girls. Oh, I didn't want to do that, because they set on fire and they take ages. Goodness gracious me. I wish they could just all just drop the opals instead of exploding. Right, well, this one doesn't take us up there. It takes us this way, I think. Yep, so that then we can get this one. See, that... 
it sounds like a girl, but the, the call that she makes was very masculine. It's a very boy sounding voice. And there's our first BLB. Excelente, making good progress. We're not gonna use that one. We're not going to use it because we don't need to now. Uh, do we need to go to the island? I forget if there is one on the island. I think there is. We'll just grab that and go. Wow, don't know what happened there. But fair enough. Let's just regain that health, shall we? Because it uses Mario 64 method of health. Enter some, enter a body of water, and you can push out all of the wounds. I'm very cautious about grabbing that. I'm not sure whether it takes me down that path or if it takes me somewhere else. Hopefully, it doesn't. Where is it going to throw me? Is it going to throw me that way? Oh no, it's going to take- oh for goodness sake. This is the one that takes me all this way. See, this is why I didn't want to do this, because now I've got a backtrack. Excellent. Amazing. Good gameplay. Right, well while we're back here, let's let's do this one instead. Oh, okay, we'll go in there as well. Essentially, this is just another path that leads to the little watery area. Ooh, you keep on sneaking up on me, don't you? Yeah, that's not going to work, Sly. I'm going to call him Sly while he's got this outfit on. Aim... Look at this. It's directly in front of you. What are you doing aiming up there? It's right in front of you. I do this all the time. Alright. Let's try again. I can hear you. I know you're there. <sighs> Keep your woolly hat on, would you? I don't think there's anything else here to get, so we'll just mosey on away from here. Now, do we have any in... Oh god, that's a noisy thing. We don't have anything really interesting to use here, so let's just use the Megarang, deal with those. I want to get... I want to get an explosive boomerang. We haven't got one yet, but... They are very fun when we do. Actually, no, there's only one. Oh, I forgot. This is, I'm thinking of the second game. I'm thinking of the deadly rang, my favorite rang. Rise, at uh, Rai? Sly's rang of choice is the deadly rang, though it acts very differently in this game. In this game, it's, it practically mimics the uh, effects of the boomerang, the, the iron bark, as it's called. Just in case you didn't know that. This boomerang is called the iron bark. And, uh... Yeah, it's it's basically just a reskin of, of this of this boomerang. It doesn't do anything special, but it just makes a funny noise when it goes. But in the second game, it's very different. The deadly rang uh, explodes on contact, and that's just fantastic. That is the greatest thing that a boomerang could ever do. The fact that it's able to come back after you've thrown it as well is simply miraculous. Oh, we don't need to do all of them. It's funny, isn't it, really? That there's this ridiculous fire going on, but Sly is... Oh, I keep calling him Sly, but Ty is only destroying what he needs to in order to save the children, and no more. Hmm. Right, well, I'm not sure exactly how to get up there. Do I need to? Oh, no, that's where the... Ah, oh, right, yeah, that's where that one was. We don't need to do that anymore, do we? I think that's eight of eight. That is eight of eight, excellente. Off we go back to the uh, to the wrecked school. Heaven knows how the children even get to this school. Like obviously at the moment I know there's a, a ridiculous forest fire happening, but at the same time, you know, it's a very out of the way place. Also, wait a minute, have they moved? Wait a minute, it's wait a minute, wait a minute, this is something I've never thought of before. Oh my God, my mind is just exploding internally. Uh, so, imploding. The school has moved position. It, like, because we were in Snow Worries, and the school was there, next to this big slide, and, you know, where the, where the mill was, where Boss Cass's mill was. But now this is a different school. This is a different school. Oh, wow, look at the piping. That's some archaic piping right there. Um, have you moved? 
Now this is an insurance thing, isn't it? This is an insurance. You've got two schools and you've burnt one down. Is that new school? Was that the new one or was this the new one? Mm, question. I bet this one's the old one. I bet this one was falling to pieces. But she was like, you know what, everybody, we're going to go back to our roots. We're going to go back to the old school for a little bit. Oh, yeah, thanks, Kiki. You found some ridiculously expensive, super radioactive, very rare crystal. Uh, thanks for that. Really super appreciative. Wait, can I speak to the children at all? No. I can... I can choose which weapon to destroy them with but I cannot speak to them good good to know yeah oh no oh no she was a scam artist she, she's she's like this ridiculous con man and she just oh no she's in like an insurance fraudster whoops a daisy I've ruined the cannon once again I don't think there's anything to do here oh yeah there is sorry None, none of that, thank you. Aim at the thing that sets on fire, would you, tie? Be really helpful. This, by the way, I, I think I showed you in the very first episode. Um, it just makes you... It turns you into a, a bunyip for a little while, but it's literally useless, and I never do it, so... I'm not. I'm <laughs> just not going to, because it is utterly useless. So... What? How, how, how deep are we going to go into this then? So, Sheila. Sheila has two schools, right? This was the old one in this, in this place. This was the old place. And she must have bought the new place, but not, not registered that, um, not like registered with the government to say that, wait a minute before I speak to him, that the old place was like condemned or like abandoned or whatever. She must still own it and say that it is still an active school. So then she got the kids to all come to this school. And I don't know, for like a field trip or something. And then just suddenly, accidentally, the school caught fire, causing a ridiculous forest fire that spanned miles. <laughs> like, I don't know if this is part of it, but that looks pretty barren now. Never looked at the birds before. That's interesting. I forget how to actually zoom in. There we go. Interesting. I wonder what they are. Kestrels? Hmm. Who knows? Maybe somebody who lives in Australia can let me know. I'm not trusting her anymore, Maury. Alright, I'll look for Booney, but don't trust that Sheila, aight? Wait a minute, that's my job. Yeah, I know. He shouldn't be looking for thunder eggs. Can you go and grab the little tyke before he gets himself into trouble, Ty? Well, he's going to get into a bit more trouble when he finds one, because, you know, he's going to start getting radiation poisoning, and no kid wants that. I should be leaving these, these guys alone. I'm sorry, I just killed you, mate. I should really send you out of your misery as well. I'm sorry. I really should get into the habit of leaving the kangaroos alone, because they don't actually hurt you. They, they don't attack you in any way, and it feels kind of wrong to be attacking an enemy that actually isn't an enemy. All they do is just throw a bit of snow at you, and that doesn't hurt. It just knocks you down. Great, there's another one. I'm gonna leave that alone, though, because it's useless. Multi-rang? I don't want a multi-rang. Oh, God, the noise. Splendid. Oh no! Whoops. Oh guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Oh jeez. I, I tell you what, I'd be terrible. Do you remember, like, oh god, this is some cons not conspiracy, but this is a sensitive topic to anybody in the gaming industry uh, that was aware of this anyway. There was a, a speed run. There was a speed run that happened at a GDQ. Uh, at least I think it was a GDQ anyway. Um, for Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, but there was a there was a reward, I forget what they're called, um, oh, what's it called when people pay for something that they want to happen specifically in a video game, in the, in a run? Something that they've paid for, uh, it's, it's not called like a reward, it's, it, what's it called? Um, whatever, it, it's something that the viewers, the, the viewers, the, the patrons of the, of GDQ paid for for the runner to do something very specific with the video game as they were playing it and they didn't do it. And that was to be pacifist. They, uh, 
incentive, that's it. So people paid for the incentive for the run to be completely passive. But the runner, the runner just kept, uh, just kept throwing boomerangs at every enemy. And I can totally understand, like, it's such a knee-jerk reaction to see an enemy and quickly throw the button, uh, press the button and throw the boomerang. It's dead easy to do, and it's so easy to just kill anything because they, most of them just take one hit. So I should be able to get him in one bite. Oh, I was too late. I was too late. He always does a U-turn there. Ah, I didn't expect him to do a U-turn there. I thought he was going to go forward and turn right. Oh, you cheeky bugger. Are you going to do it again? Are you going to do it again? Oh, he's not going to stop this time. Sorry, lads. Excellent. Good job, Booney. <laughs> Booney, he can't hear you, Maury. He's buried in the snow. Oh, there he is. He's okay now. Yeah, you better be. You need to go to the hospital. Now, I hear you've got something to give our good mate Ty. An apology. I found this. You can have... No, you can keep it, Boons. No, you can keep it, B. I don't want that. Kids these days. Computers, internet, mobile phones that drives you mad. It does, yeah. It's funny how that how well that's aged, isn't it? Wait, does he speak again? I've never really tried. What do you say? Doing too bad, Ty. Oh, cheers. Is that it? All right. Well, thanks a lot, Maury. I mean, I, I am trying my best, you know, saving the world and everything. You know, considering he's wearing shoes. Um, yeah. Lad, mate, I've got boomerangs. These kill, you know, these are real dangerous. You've just got snow that you're somehow picking up from ice. I'm not going to question your logic, but hmm, stay away from me, mate. I'm dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, it was a bit of a controversy. I say controversy. It was a bit of a... Um, it was a bit of a problem because loads of people complained that this runner was effectively going back on what he was supposed to be doing for the run. Because, you know, all these people had, had paid for a particular thing to happen and the, the runner just wasn't doing it. He kept... He kept attacking the enemies and apologizing and like I, I appreciate it's very stressful like I've never done something like that before I can imagine it is an extremely stressful situation being in front of so many people because it was still back when live events were still a thing you know and not only that but like you're in front of you, you, you know, you're being broadcast all over the world. You've got thousands, if not tens, hundreds of thousands of people watching. So I can totally imagine that it must be harrowing to be sat at a desk in front of all these people on live, uh, like on live TV effectively, but it's internet TV, uh, playing a video game and having to be also entertaining at the same time. That's why they have the couch. The couch is there so that people don't have to be talking all the time. And he did have a couch. I don't think they were a particularly entertaining bunch. Yeah, I know. They shouldn't be throwing things like that. That's real dangerous. Though, you know, these cable cars, Ken, these cable cars, mate, are a bit dangerous in and of themselves. Do you know why? You can't get in them. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're already a danger because there's no door. You have to stand on them. I'm going to get that one. I always get that one. It's, it's dead easy to remember. You have to stand on the cable car. Like, there's nothing more dangerous, Ken, than standing on top of the cable car. You shouldn't be doing that. All right, this is probably the only time I actually use the Zoomerang because it's easy to just dispatch of them before they get a chance to throw any rocks. I don't think that was going to reach. So, let's see if I can... No, not, not there yet. <sighs> I forget what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, the, the, the video game. It must, it, it must be just be so scary doing that. 
So I can totally appreciate that it wouldn't have been... It would be quite difficult to remember everything that you were supposed to be doing. Did he just heal? Excuse me. Did you just... I know you used your left hand, but did you just heal? I'm going to be very... I'm, I've got the boomerang ready to throw, if that's what you just did. Please. Did you just scratch your head? Okay, if, if that's all you did... I'll allow it. Oh, he, he saluted. Okay, right, he saluted. That's fine. That's acceptable. That's allowed. That's a, that's legal in my book. That's legal. You can salute. You can do whatever you want, Sonny Jim. But uh, I won't accept hiling. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, it was, it was just a salute. It's a very cheeky salute. Still miles away, I think. Oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right, we're not going to go back and talk to Ken yet, because we still have to come back this way, so we'll do that in a bit. <sighs> Though, I mean, best laid plans last time, I went and got that bilby early. It wasn't a bilby, it was a child. I went and got collected that child early, and uh, still had to go through the, the flowers, the teleporting flowers, so... Things don't always work out as they, as, uh, as they should. Good, 200. That's exactly as I expect I should have. I don't know why I always remember that uh, 200 is, is like the perfect amount for this bit. Now, this bit is really stupid. Sometimes the, the opals don't really line up exactly where they should be. So, forgive me if I do miss one, but they're really hard to, to get everything perfect. You have to kind of be a little bit above them if you want to make sure you get them all. Okay, I think I think I got this one all right. I'm gonna drop down a little bit because it's faster. Cool. This this place is a bit daft, really. You've got like this training section down here for like cadets or something. I don't really remember what what the lore is here, but effectively. There's some thing that was I, I, like I really can't remember what exactly this point the point of this place is, but there's a snowball launcher which I assume is actually there for some other reason other than to, okay, okay. By the way, look at that. See that cog in the distance? Keep an eye on it. Ah, oh, wrong one. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong one. Oh, I'm a fool. It's, is it over there? Yeah, it was over there. If you look at that one from a distance, you can actually see the cog, and then the mound of snow appears afterwards. Ah, oh, foolish. I feel I feel very silly now. That was my bad. But yeah, there's a snowball launcher. I mean, Ken explains it in a little bit. I think it was actually sent there specifically to dispatch of like a, a frill invasion that's setting fire to everything, probably hired by Sheila. You know, I've got my uh, I've got my eye on Sheila now. I'm very worried about those children, because they I don't like I fear for their safety at this point. Yeah, because these these frills are causing all kinds of havoc and setting fire to the trees. So yeah, we want to make sure to uh, to dispatch of them all. Also, this is fun. We. Interestingly, he's not holding his pose. In the, uh, in the PlayStation One, he'd always hold his hold his pose, but he's not doing it on this one. All right, well, there we go. Hi, up, Ken. How are you in two places at once? You were at the cable car system. Ken, do you are you not telling me something? Like you either have an identical twin, and I mean like to the tuft of fur identical and fashion sense of course which by the way is is quite revealing you know i mean you, maybe you just can't get shirts in your size but no you know what it's fine or you've got teleportation abilities G'day, either way i'm worried thrills are lighting fires all over the place that's irresponsible that's what it is hey, too right. yeah quite right they are setting fire to trees that's pretty bad usually but mate I wouldn't have a clue Why don't they just send you a gun? Do you know how to use a gun, Ken? I don't know how, how rife 
guns are. I don't know how you fire. How do I fire? There we go. I don't know how rife guns are in uh, Australia. Is 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 are guns a problem in Australia? I've never been. I'd love to go, to be honest. I'd love to go to Australia. It sounds like such a wicked place. Wickedly evil as well. Like, there's so many things that can kill you in Australia. But, uh, so I've heard, anyway. There's like fish and there's, you know, spiders and scorpions and what have you, but... You know, if, as long as you're in like the particularly urban areas, I doubt it's actually a problem. But uh, I'd still really love to go to Australia. Because I think they have like a similar climate in certain areas anyway. In certain areas of Australia, they have a similar climate to England. In that it can get quite rainy, it can still get quite cold. But during the day, it can still be fairly hot in the summer, which of course is our winter because it's in the southern hemisphere imagine imagine there's like this horde of teenagers that are going around setting fire to, to trees obviously this is some kind of exaggeration this would have to be some kind of organized military group because there's no way kids would just actively go around setting fire to trees especially nowadays now that we're all very like environmentally conscious Okay, by the way, five seconds left. I'm gonna let that one go. I'm gonna let that one go. Two, one, zero. You those rules a thing or two. Well, except for those last you know two. What, I, want to make you an I don't think you have... Do you have the ability to do that? Like, what kind of power do you have? Do you usually give out funny rocks as a, a reward for, like... The, the hierarchy system and ranger ship also what am i doing over here why am i is okay also where did they come from there must be like a secret trap door there leading underground these frills man they're getting everywhere yeah so there must be some kind of organized group setting fire to everything and just trying to bring down the Burum, well, it's not even Burramudgee yet, is it? Because we, we don't actually get told that this place is Burramudgee until the second game. And even then, I don't even think it is Burramudgee because there's no town, really. There's just, as far as I'm aware, a school. Two schools. Well, one X school. Now just a pile of cinders and a school. And a beach with, like, a swimming training school. Uh, Dennis's house. Mm, a few other things, but not really, you know, town-worthy, is it? There's not really much of a... What, what would it be called? There's not much of an, of an economy here, is there, really? Just a little strange, I suppose. There's nothing really... That, like, there's... I know there's technically a currency, which is the opals, that isn't really uh built up on until the second game where it actually is a, uh, a currency instead of just a useless collectible that gives you one thing at the end maybe maybe oh wait wait a minute wait a minute another game theory is brewing in my head maybe it was julius who started the economy in the second game using his collection of opals like, you have to think, right? Okay, so hang on a minute. Uh, where do we go? How do I do this? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight, and then we've got one more level. So that's nine levels in total, each with 300 opals in. So what's nine times three? That's 27. Uh, then obviously times by 100. So we've got 2,700 opals. Now, obviously, that's not really very much. That's not a lot, really, to start a proper economy on. But just to get things off the ground, that might, you know, that might just be enough to, you know, to build a, a little bit of a a shopping area, perhaps. I don't know how, how expensive things are. Obviously, things are quite expensive when we start buying boomerangs in the second game. 2,700 would get you one pair of rangs. 
Now, is this is this a second price for my ranger ship? Is this am I like ranger plus now? Now that you've given me two of those shiny rocks. So I think that's it now. We just need to do the time trial uh, and get the the opals back. So. What's the fastest way of getting back to the start? Probably exiting the level and oh. Right, well see you later, Wombat. It just popped out of existence. Yeah, I think just since the easiest way is probably actually exiting the level and coming back in, but that's just poor gameplay, so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more time to go through these game theories. Julius starts the economy. Julius starts the economy. I love this theory. Julius has been collecting. Okay, right. So he's been collecting just like Dennis with his um, thunder eggs. Julius has been collecting opals for decades, right? So he's got a massive, massive collection of, uh, of opals. And we're just finding more for him he, we're finding like the stragglers the ones that are just left around the place we're like effectively penny pinching from the world and we get given a thunder egg which obviously julius has realized wait these are way too powerful for me i don't want these anymore you can give them to dennis but 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 wait 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 a minute wait a minute wait a minute something's not right here because julius must already have the opal. He must already have these thunder eggs. Julius must already have these thunder eggs to give to you in exchange for 300 opals. So why would he then... Okay, so it's like giving somebody a present that you know that they're not going to use so that you can then use it yourself. Imagine that. Oh, wow. That is it, isn't it? So, Julius gives you this thunder egg for giving him these 300 opals so that he can then further build this economy that he plans to do for the second game and build this this beautiful town. I bet the town already exists, but there's not... I bet it's more of like a, um, a trading system, like in the olden days. There's no actual currency yet. Because as we know, you know, things are kind of traded for jobs here. Whereas in the second game, everything is traded for actual monetary value. Here, whenever somebody has a job for you to do, they give you something in return that isn't monetary. So whether it's a thunder egg or it's pie, so sustenance, uh, what other things do they give you? Um, I guess Ranger Ken's going to give us a medal at some point, so there's something. But, uh, oh, like the boomerangs. So, the aquarangs we were given oh, as more of an incentive so that we can then go and save his wife that he thinks that, uh, that Rex thinks is missing or is hurt in some way. So, yeah, it's all based on, like, a trading system. But... But... So yeah, so getting back to this point, Julius already has these thunder eggs that he's giving to us so that then we can give back to him um, in order to acquire the talismans. But secretly, Julius is more after these opals because he knows that these are going to be a viable uh, economic uh, denomination. They're going to be something that can be used for purchasing. And because there's so few of them, I suppose that their, their value is is quite high. But then I guess more people find them everywhere else, like in other places, in other other cities, other worlds, and they bring them to this place. That's why when you kill the, th the frills in the second game, they have opals on them. That's effectively maybe their wage. <laughs> Who knows from Boss Cass. Ooh, I like this theory. 
I'm gonna have to write a book <laughs> about all these ridiculous theories. I, I utterly love it. I love this theory so, so much. I'm not sure where this takes us. I think it takes us to the training ground. Um, but we've we've effectively done everything here, so we can just we can just peace out. The game saves you at every uh, opportunity, so you can just exit. Right. Well, that was a that was a deep a deep set. Uh, right. Okay. We've we've gone through quite a lot here. Sheila is not necessarily a confidence trickster, but she she is effectively scamming uh, her insurance company in order to get money. Uh, though, you have to remember, there isn't an economy yet. So maybe she's just after renovation. So maybe the maybe the price of destroying, maybe her insurance covers renovation costs. So effectively, the company that will then renovate her new school, which is in Snow Worries. So that's one theory. Uh, the second theory... What was the second theory? Well, we didn't really, we did, we only actually had two real theories. Uh, there was also this, this idea that Ken can teleport, <laughs> which uh, I'm not sure if I like the idea of that. He clearly just has some un secret underground passage. Oh yeah, the second theory was kind of linked to the first theory in that Sheila is causing this forest fire, obviously to do with her insurance scam. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of linked to that. The second theory, of course, is Julius over there building this, this economy so that then he can he can set up this, this world of Buramuji. Uh, Buramuji must already exist, but it's just a trading system at the moment. So he wants to bring in this, this idea of currency, uh, but he holds like the majority of the money, which he can then trade out in exchange for services and, and give to people to get it into circulation so that then other people start having money. Maybe he can act then as a government. He must be able to then act as a government to give people some kind of uh, minimum wage for work, which are then people can then use to pay for services or to pay other employees. Interesting. Interesting. Really interesting. I love it. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm going to leave you with, with this glo uh, glorious face. Um, please do join me again next time for more Thai, where we will be going to, I think it's Rex Marks the Spot. Let me just do a quick check arena. Yep, Rex Marks the Spot. And um, I'll see you then.